Professor of Sustainable Geoscience and a fellow staff member at the University of Manchester, may I just say. <laughs> uh, Chris Jackson focuses his research on the application of geophysics to understand a wide range of geological processes, from sedimentary to magmatic. His field work has taken him to remote and physically and mentally challenging locations, including the Argentinian Andes, the Borneo Rainforest and the Sinai Desert in Egypt. And he's also in Norway now. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, Chris is a passionate teacher uh, and communicator. And I actually first met him um, in a sort of cameo role in the 2019 Christmas lectures. And the year later, I was amazed when they announced in 2020, Chris uh, would be the first black person to host the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. So it's an amazing honour to talk to you. We've got another Christmas lecture here. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by yeah. them here. Future, yeah. ten years' time. Um, <laughs> well, the Christmas Lectures are science lecture series that was started by Michael Faraday in 1825 and who has a lecture theatre in this very building named after him. So, Chris, we're really honoured to have you with us. Hi, Chris. Hello, how are you both? Are you, are, you, are you well? Yeah, good, thanks. Yes, yeah. I mean, it sounds incredibly complex when we introduce you, doesn't it? Uh, how do you describe what a sustainable geoscience does and why is it more important to society everywhere now more than ever? Well, I think at the moment we've got a number of challenges related to how we live sustainably on the earth and that is how we utilise resources and how we protect ourselves and keep people safe from natural hazards. So, you know, so-called geohazards. And what I'm interested in and a, a number of researchers I work with is how can we use our geological understanding? So that's how the Earth works, you know, the dynamics of our planet, how the Earth moves and how earthquakes are generated, how volcanoes erupt, how we explore for water and, and, and minerals that allow us to build iPads and, you know, all the computing things that are integral to our lives. You know, how we use that understanding to kind of to improve in, improve our livelihoods around the world. So it's um, it's bringing together just a fundamental understanding of how our planet works for a purpose. And your work, Chris, I mean, it literally takes you all over the world, doesn't it? Like you say, you're in Norway now, not that we're very jealous at all. <laughs> um, but tell us about some of the places you've been and, and some of the things you've discovered. Yeah, so I've been really fortunate through my job to travel because the rocks are kind of indiscriminate about where they're exposed at the Earth's surface, of course. So we go to where the rocks are. Yeah. Um, so um, I've been doing fieldwork recently in the Argentinian Andes, so on the border with Chile, uh, to go and look at some rocks which are about 150 million years old and were deposited in three kilometres of water, right? So it's kind of yeah. about a place many, many hundreds of millions of years ago. Um, and, you know, I've also worked in the Egyptian desert, so the Sinai Desert for my PhD, and that's an area where the Earth's crust is being uh, pulled apart, so it's a rift valley. And um, what I discovered there was that, you know, the landscapes we actually see present day in the Sinai Desert mm. actually are very similar to the landscapes that were there about 20 million years ago, so not much has changed. So, um, yeah, very fortunate to go and look at lots of different rocks in lots of rather exotic locations. Yes. <laughs> so you're, you're quite literally, Chris, a rock star. No. Oh, <laughs> oh. Wait, what's been the highlight of your career so far? And what would you say to the younger generation who are interested in green jobs? I think to your first bit of your question there, the, the highlight of my career so far has been really being able to go and visit all of these places and have a lot of cultural enrichment, right? So. I'm interested in, in the rocks and, you know, the structure and evolution of the Earth as a scientist, but I've got to interact with lots of different types of people when I visited these different places. And also through being a, a PhD supervisor and, and teaching at the university, I've got to interact with a lot of people. So there's a lot of additional things I feel have been brought to me as a person by the people I've interacted with, not necessarily through the science I've done. For the future generation who are interested in green jobs, just be aware that geosciences is a really good route into that. Geosciences is going to be integral to us achieving many of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So a lot of things related to resource security, related to geohazards and protect, protecting people's lives and livelihoods are going to be kind of solved or tackled by geoscientists. So you can really play an important societal role in the future. And, and Chris, you've got a family, haven't you? Do, you, do, your, yeah. do your kids get involved in this? Do they love your work? <laughs> um, yeah, I sometimes use them as scale bars, right? So if there's a nice piece of rock <laughs> and I need something to kind of portray the scale, I'll put one of my small children in front of the rocks and, and then I'll take a picture and they'll think, yeah, I'll be just like, oh, just look at the rocks for a second. So I just kid them into it. But they, I mean, most, 
<laughs> more seriously than that, you know, there, there are gateways into geosciences, right? So the big ticket items like paleontology, dinosaurs, yeah. volcanoes, mm -hmm. they draw people into the discipline. And then from there, once we've got them kind of hooked on this deep time perspective, how we read the rock record and the, and the paleontological record, then we can start to, in, you know, in, interest them in lots of other things to do with geosciences as well. So I am secretly kind of tricking them into liking geology. Yeah, <laughs> stealth-like, brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so Chris, what's the best bit of technology that you've been using? Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. I mean, drones and um, have been really kind of central to uh, collecting lots of digital data, so mm. geospatially located data. So by that I mean data which you can actually put in a very accurate position on Earth and go back to. And, and also drones allow us to access bits of rock that are inaccessible to us because it's dangerous to go into these places so we can fly up and collect data. I think though still central to many geologists' uh, toolkits are pens and pencils and notebooks and, and <laughs> yeah. compasses and things which allow us to record information and nowadays that's yeah. done digitally of course with iPads and things that we can take in the field so we can have GPSs talking to our iPads rather than a compass talking to our paper notebook yeah. um, but these these things you know these things are kind of incremental uh, benefits but they are based on kind of old ideas and old ways of collecting data so we use the old and the new. So you'd have rock, maybe paper, some scissors as well. And stone. <laughs> I see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris, we won't let you be subject you to any more of Bobby's jokes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you too. Thank you so much for having me on.